Okay, so today what I'm going to talk about is this fun fold that I have for you. Um, I know my lighting isn't great. I'm hoping, can you see that okay, Sherry? Can you tell me, is it too dark? Um, okay, well, let me know. <laughs> anyway, so we're going to talk about this fun fold. This beautiful paper is from the um, Share What You Love designer series paper, which is coming out in June, but it is part of a special pre-order that will be available all for the month of May, which is very exciting. It's called the um, Share What You Love Suite and Bundle, and you'll be seeing a lot of that, I'm sure, over the next month. It's one of the things that's new at Stampin' Up! The stamp set I'm using is also from that kit. It's the um, photopolymer set, Love What You Do. It's so pretty. I just, I love it. And um, you've probably already seen several uh, samples done with this by other demonstrators and myself on my blog, memoryinkers.com. So, um, well, you're going to be using that. We're going to be using some of our wonderful and beautiful, I love these, um, basic rhinestone or rhinestone basics, depending on how long you've been around. And a brand new ink color also we're going to be using called Grapefruit Grove. This is one of the new in colors for the new year and it'll be around for a couple of years. So I'm not going to make this card exactly like this. It's going to be darn close. This one though also uses, and I have to look because I don't remember, it also uses the layered leaf um, dynamic impressions folder. Isn't that pretty? But I didn't want to do the exact same one for you, so it's going to be similar, but um, a little bit different. So let's get started while you guys are watching. Well, Sherry's watching anyway. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to start with the um, Grapefruit Grove cardstock, of course, folded in half. And then this is from that same paper suite. Isn't it beautiful? I just love it. And then this is the same one that I used for this card here. So what we're going to start with, I'm going to move this out of the way. And I'm going to show you first how I do the fold. So if you do not have a, a um, Simply Score tool, then you'll have to um, use whatever you've got that's scoreable. And you, I have it marked at, um, this piece is four inches by four inches, just so you know, you can see that. And what you're going to do is you're going to go corner to corner. Now you would think that it, I thought it was three inches, but it really isn't. It's like uh, two and seven eighths. And then I needed to know where to line it up down here. So I put a sticky note there with a little mark, but this is how I figured it out. I took my ruler and I set it there and then I put the sticky note in place and, and shoved I know that you can do it with the scoring tool also, but I wanted to make sure I didn't lose the spot. So, so now I've got it lined up with the groove down here and the groove up here. And then I'm going to go over, I'm going to use my ruler so y'all can see what I'm doing. I'm going to go over to this one inch mark, which is right here. So hopefully, is that in? I think that's in there. And I'm going to just go very slowly down the groove. Whoops. And that's the trick, is you have to hold this in place. So you're going to go slowly down the groove, and go to one inch, and then I'm going to come over to one and a half inches. Now you don't want to pull too hard because you're going to end up tearing your um, paper. So although this is pretty thick because it is specialty paper. And then you're going to score again at one and a half. And I'm going to do that four times. And I found it's easier to do this if you just um, if you just keep turning the paper then trying to do the math from the other direction I have limits with my mathematical skills I don't know about any of you guys but you're probably all going oh it'd be so easy to do it that way but I'm not that person okay hopefully I never do as well when I'm doing video and it has been such a long time since I have done a Facebook Live, I apologize. I know I did a few while Michael's mother was alive. And I just, I haven't gotten back into the groove of it. And I'm going to be working on doing one every week now. I haven't decided if it's going to be on Wednesday or Thursday. 
but it will be one of those days. Okay, so now I've done each one at one inch and one and a half inches. Hopefully that makes sense. Move this out of the way. Okay, now I've got this set. I'm just going to set it aside for a minute. And I'm going to take this beautiful paper and I'm going to add this little piece of ribbon right here. Now, if you've got your um, grid paper, which I don't know why I don't, I just, I forgot to put it down, then you can, you can line this up pretty perfectly, but I'm going to just eyeball it, and you know, I don't think perfection is all that terribly important, although people who receive my cards may disagree with me. They better not tell me, or they may not receive another one. So I am just put it on there, and of course, tuck the tails in the back. And then again with the snail. You'll be happy to know our snail adhesive is in the new catalog. I know we all miss fast fuse. It's very disappointing, but it was a manufacturer issue, not a Stampin' Up! issue. So they were having too many quality issues, and so they had to let it go. Okay, so there's the basic front of the card. And then later I will put the bow on, but now I'm going to show you how you're going to fold this, this piece that you have scored. You're going to fold all of these in. You can use your bone folder, but since I'm standing, I'm just going to use my thumbnails. Because you want it to be a pretty, pretty strong fold. And the reason I did the opposites is because Perfection, as you know, as I say all the time, is very overrated, especially when I'm your Stampin' Up! demonstrator. <laughs> so if you do the opposite ones, then you're going to get a good um, mitered corner a little bit easier than having them flip-flop around. Okay. Now this paper is super, super thick. I mean, it's like cardstock. So um, if you're going to do this with different paper, you may have to... Um, be a little gentler than I am. Now if you notice that when it folds it actually has a right and a wrong way. So you wouldn't want to you know do it that way or that way. You want to make sure that when you adhere it to the card you're doing it in the right direction. So I'm just going to put a little snail back here. If you want to you could add some snail to hold your folds down tight but I don't. I want them to be Kind of loosey goosey. Okay. All right, so there's the basics. All right. I forgot something, so I had to grab it. Sorry. All right, now I am going to stamp the sentiment onto this little piece, which is cut. Sorry, I left my notes over there too. Um, this is cut at one and three quarters in a square, and it's going to be matted on some rich razzleberry that is cut at one and seven eighths, um, and it's a square also. So now what you have to remember is that that's going to go at diagonal. So you want the diagonal, and I'm going to stamp this time the thank you in the rich razzleberry, where here you can see that I did the flowers in rich razzleberry and the thank you in old olive and pardon my head if it's in the way also this is photo photopolymer so if you are stamping with photopolymer stamps please make sure you have one of our awesome foam mats underneath and this is our old style pads and I think you've probably seen my YouTube video on our awesome new ink pads that just pop open instead of doing all that flippy dippy stuff and then you just slide them into place okay so now I'm just going to do again the same flowers that I did on the other one now depending on how juicy your ink pad is sometimes you can take your blender pen 
and just blend. This one, um, I don't know why it's not quite as juicy as normal, so I don't know if you know if you squeeze, you can get ink on the... Oh, squeeze a little harder, Carrie. I don't have re-inkers for these yet, so I, I really like to squirt a re-inker in there. There we go. And you can just grab a little bit with your blender pen. And I'm not worrying about it being perfect. I don't want it to be perfect. I want it to be kind of messy. As opposed to, see this one, I was able to do it with just pulling the blender pen out of the Rich Razzleberry ink. Right off of the, um, right off the image that I stamped. And it came off. Okay, so there it gave me a little bit better. And, um... So it just gets a little bit lighter color in the background. This is a pretty simple card. I will go over those directions again for you, and I will put them in the comments after this um, after this live post posts. I hope that makes sense. Okay, I can't see. I'm getting too old. I have to put this on a lighter color. Okay. <laughs> Plus then you guys can probably see it too. Okay, now I'm going to put this up on um, Stampin' Dimensionals. You can do whole dimensionals or half dimensionals. I know you guys know that if you come to my classes, you know that I very often cut these in half or I use the minis, but this is what I grabbed out of my drawer. Also, this is our beautiful new velvet ribbon in Rich Razzleberry. It's so pretty. Then I'm just going to center this in here. Okay, that might not be, that might be sticking up a little more than I want it to. So I'm going to, I'm going to do a little bit of sticking down. And then, oh, nice, it's not working because I have to lift this up a little bit. That's one thing, I don't know about you guys, but I very often design on the fly with things. And if it's not going the way I want it to, then I just take it apart and do it again. Lift. This is the struggle is real, people. <laughs> okay. That's a little better. That holds it down a little bit. And you noticed I only did it in two places because I do I do like it lifting. <coughs> Excuse me. And then lastly, I'm going to put on the bow. And I've said this a lot on my blog, but I don't think I've ever done it on a Facebook Live. I don't like my bows to come untied. So um, I put a piece of our um, tear and tape on the back because it'll hold the bow very, very well, which is good. But because it is across the tie and part of the bow loops, it's going to keep the bow from untying also. And, you know, I, f I fiddled with this for a minute to get it to look the way I want. But there are the cards. I hope you like them. Again, it's a very simple fold. Um, it's a 4x4 four four square that then you put diagonally on your Simply Score tool and you score it at one inch and one and a half inches. So this was the one inch and that's the one and a half inch on all four sides. And then you just fold it over. And there you go. So I hope that you like it. I hope that um, you will let me know if you are interested in me doing any more of these live videos. And while I have your attention, I'm going to show you the four cards that are part of the June Stamp of the Month Club. That's the club where you um, get the stamp set and you get four projects. And this time it is called Waterfront, the stamp set. And you'll get all four projects and full color directions. And this month it's $35 for everything which is very cool. And you can even come to my house and take the class and then you're using my inks and things as well, which is a lot of fun. So I will see you next week with another Facebook Live, some new fun technique to share with you. Have a great day. Bye.